In this presentation, we're going to record the purchase of furniture, which is going to be part of property, plant, and equipment. In other words, depreciable asset. We're going to be purchasing something that will be capitalized as a depreciable asset. We're going to be purchasing it for cash. We're going to be focusing in on cash transactions in the first month. We'll talk more about non-cash transactions, such as financing something like per, uh, furniture and equipment in the second month. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitar file. We're going to open up our standard reports to see what our objective will be. We're going to go to the reports down below. We're going to be opening up our favorite report, that being the balance sheet report. So we're going to open up that balance sheet report. I'm going to scroll back up top. We're going to be changing those dates up top. The dates from 010120 to 123120. Then we're going to run that report. So there we have it. Then I'm going to go back and also open up the trial balance. So before we do, we're going to duplicate this tab. I'm going to right click up top. We're going to duplicate this tab. That'll put the balance sheet on the right. Then our other tab on the left. Then I'm going to go back down to the reports down below. We're going to be uh, looking for the trial balance now. So in the find field, I'm going to say trial balance. And we'll pick up that trial balance. And there we have it. We've opened up the trusty trial balance. Scrolling back up top, going to be changing the dates up top from 010120 to 123120. Let's go ahead and run that report. Then I'm going to duplicate that tab. So we're going to go to the tab up top. We're going to right click that tab up top and we will duplicate it. So let's go back to our balance sheet to consider our objective. Back to the balance sheet. We're going to be closing the hamburger here. I'm holding down control and scrolling up a little bit to get to the 125 let's keep it at 125 now we're going to be purchasing uh, furniture and equipment now this is a, another thing that will typically happen when you start a new type of business especially if you're basically have a new office or something like that and you have to have an initial investment of some type such as purchasing furniture purchasing equipment and so on and so forth it's also one of those transactions which once again are a little bit different than the normal day-to-day -day transactions that you will have through the running of the business because typically that will incl include the customer cycle and normal vendor cycle like inventory and other type of monthly expenses here we're going to be purchasing something large something large therefore is not going to be going on the books as an expense typically it'll be going on the books we're going to capitalize it in the form of an asset therefore we're going to put this larger uh, expenditure up here under the fixed assets section and we'll have to depreciate it over time We'll talk about depreciation in a future presentation. Just note here that even if you're on a cash basis, that this is one area where you basically deviate from cash. And usually you can kind of think of it, if I purchase something large, then it's going to be benefiting me for multiple periods in the future. If I was to expense it upon purchase, even if I paid cash for it, it would really distort the, the financial statement. In other words, if I expensed a large purchase because I paid cash for it in January, and I tried to measure January through performance to february like how did we do january would show some huge loss because we expensed something that's going to benefit us for hopefully years into the future in one month so th that's the problem and that's why it's and when you're dealing with things that are, are large dollar um, large dollar amounts that problem is significant and so even if you're on a cash basis you pretty much have to basically capitalize these large purchases uh so that you have better comparison of performance data from period to period okay so that's what we're going to do we're going to be purchasing equipment we're going to say that we're going to first piece of equipment we're going to purchase from office depot for sixteen thousand dollars we're going to say all right so we could do that purchase i'm going to go back and that means that obviously the equipment's going to go up and then the cash is the other side we're going to purchase it for cash is going to go down no effect on the pl p l no expense no effect on the income statement so let's go back to the first tab then how can we do this transaction? Well, we could go to the plus button and take a look at the types of forms that we can use to do this transaction. We might have an expense type of form or write a check type of form. Those are two options that we could use. If we're just entering this directly into the system for you know tracking purposes, I tend to think it's gonna be easier to use uh, the, the uh, check register in this case. It's a little bit faster to use the check register. So I wanna practice that. So we're gonna to go to the register I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to go down to the uh, accounting tab. We're in the accounting. We're going to be up top in the register. So we want the bank account. I'm going to open that bank account. We're going to have that register that looks kind of familiar if you have a checking, uh, a checkbook. I'm going to close the hamburger up top. And then I'm going to select the drop down 
to choose the kind of transaction. Now, if it's a check, if we wrote a check, then we can enter the check here. If we're actually writing a check out of QuickBooks, then we can generate the check, have pre-printed checks, and then print them out of, out of QuickBooks. Obviously, it wouldn't be a deposit. It wouldn't be a received payment. Uh, a pay bill would have to do with um, paying down a payable account, a refund, or we can basically enter it as uh, an, a, just an expense type of transaction. And this may be appropriate if we paid basically an electronic transfer or something like that. Don't have a check number, but it's basically decreasing the checking account. Let's try that one. I'm going to pick up the uh, expense here. We're going to say this happened on the 9th. Now I'm on the 7th right now. I'm going to make it go up by just hitting the plus button on the keyboard. So that's a little bit faster if you want to practice using the keyboard. And again, anytime you can use the keyboard, you're being more geeky. And that's, you know, obviously a good a benefit for uh, QuickBooks here. So then we're going to go to the payee. It's going to be Office Depot. Office Depot. That's going to be a new uh, vendor. So I'm going to say tab. It's going to say that's a new vendor. We don't see that yet. And notice I'm adding vendors as we go. So I could just say, yeah. And I'm just going to add a quick note. Just we, we could add more detail here to the vendor. But I don't want to. I just need to. I just need to pay Office Depot. I don't need to know their phone number. I don't need to know their address. I just need to record the transaction right now. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Notice we're adding vendors. However, note we're adding vendors as we enter the transactions. That's typical for the first few months of operations. When we when we enter the phone bill, when we pay the utility bill for the first month of operations. Every time we write a check, we're going to be adding a vendor. For the second month of operations, all these vendors will be in there already and it'll be much faster because as we generate a transaction, the vendor will basically populate itself by itself. We'll see that when we do the second month of data input. So the second month of data input, I mean, if you're teaching someone else how to do the second month, you could basically say, hey, just, you know, pretty much copy the first month, right? So, you know, see what happened the first month, whoever we paid, whatever other account it went to, then copy that. It should basically be the same. If we put the telephone company to the telephone expense, then put, you know, the Verizon telephone company to the telephone expense, right? It should be, and it should pop up and it'll populate for itself. So it'll be much easier once you, once you get the initial setup and the initial month of transactions set up. When you first set up a new company, however, we have these kind of unusual transactions like purchasing large pieces of a furniture, which are kind of like one-time transactions to get the business up and running moving forward. So we're going to say this is going to be a payment of 16,000, 16,000 on the payment. We're going to say the other side, where's the other side going to go? Well, it's got to be some kind of fixed asset type of account. Remember, it's not going to be going to an expense because it's too large of an amount and it's going to be benefiting us for multiple years. Therefore, we should be capitalizing it and then depreciating it. So unusual again for normal type of transactions to do that. But but the, the, when we have a large purchase, that's what happens. And that often happens at the beginning, setting up the organization. So I'm looking for over here, I'm looking at the account types. I'm looking for a fixed asset account type. So we have the expenses. We have the bank accounts. We have the other assets. Here's a fixed asset and it's machinery and equipment. And I'm, I'm saying this one's furniture, furniture. So I don't think furniture is going to fit in there quite perfectly. So let's put in... See if we can find another account or make another one called furniture, furniture, let's say, and fixtures. They often have furnitures and fixtures. Hopefully I set that up correctly. Now I'm going to add this account as we go. I'm just going to add it as we go. I'm not going to the GL or to, to add the account as we've seen in the past when we entered the beginning balances. I'm just going right to the transaction. I'm saying, hey, I need another account. It wasn't in the chart of accounts. I'm going to add them as I go. Now be careful with this. Because if you're not careful, then you're going to be adding duplicate accounts and whatnot. And you'll also want to be careful about the... Uh, so you don't want to have a bunch of different accounts, basically, or duplicate accounts. You want to copy the prior period and have as many as few accounts as possible. Otherwise, things get messy. But, you know, add the accounts as you go, especially for the first couple months. The other thing you want to be very careful of is when you add the account, picking the proper account type. So the proper account type here is going to be an, uh, a fixed asset type of account. So it's a depreciable asset type of account. So we want a fixed asset type of account that's going to show up on the balance sheet. And then we want the other detail. We can pick whatever the appropriate other detail is. And we have furniture. We're going to pick up the furniture. Let's keep it at that. 
that looks good and we'll keep this name as furniture and fixtures let's keep it at that no description it's not a sub account of anything it's going to fall under however the category of fixed assets so that looks good we're going to say save and close and there we have it let's go ahead and record this i'm going to hold down control and minimize the screen a bit so i can see the save button and then i'm going to save it <laughs> so you can see what happens on the register it takes it down on the register remember the registers in kind of reverse order so the newest transactions in other words are on top now let's take a look at what happens to the trustee trial balance let's refresh the screen to see what does happen I'm going to close the hamburger and I'm going to hold down control and go up a little bit. So we're back to the 125. We have the cash up top. If I go into the checking account to see what is in the checking account. And there we have it on uh, 19. It's the expense here. So if we scroll to the right, there's the 16,000. Now the, the form it used was an expense. If I check on it, if I click on that 16,000, then we see the form. It's not going to take me back to the register. It takes us to an expense form. So here's here's the form. Uh, here's the amount for the sixteen thousand. The other side being in the furniture and fixture. So I'm going to close this back out, and then I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to scroll back up. We're going to go back to our register. And then we're going to take a look at what is on the other side. The other side then going to the furniture and fixture. So here's the furniture and fixture. There's the sixteen thousand. Selecting that, there's our transaction. Scrolling back up, let's take a look at it on the balance sheet with the subtotals. Balance sheet, obviously, if I well, let's refresh the screen. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Refresh the screen, and then we have the checking account, pr pretty straightforward, and then the uh, fixed assets. Notice the subcategory because this is the account type we used, which was the fixed asset account. So there's the account type, and then we have the furniture and fixtures below it as well as the, the machinery and equipment. So now we're gonna do this again, a similar process. We're gonna go back to the first tab. We're gonna say we bought another uh, piece of furniture for 7,000, this time from Amazon. So again, we could do the same thing. We can go back up top and we could say plus, and you could use a form in order to make, to make the purchase, money going out, which might be an expense type form, or we can go to the register, which I think is gonna be the easier way to go. So I'm gonna go to the accounting down below, I'm going to be going to the register. So the first register I want is the checking account. I want to view the register. So there it is. I'm going to close the hamburger up top so we can be working here. I'm going to select the drop down and I want to add an expense. So I'm going to say I'm going to add an expense. That's just going to be that. Now, no, that's a little deceiving type of form because notice I'm using an expense type form. We're not actually adding an expense. We're adding uh, an asset, a capital asset. So don't let that throw you off. This is just the expense quote form that we're going to be using, uh, which basically is not a check, but an expense type form that we're going to use to record basically the asset of the uh, equipment that we're purchasing. So we're going to be putting this in place as of uh, 0-1-11-2-0. And again, you could have just hit the plus button one time to put the next day up. I'm not going to have a reference number. The payee is going to be Amazon. So I'm going to add Amazon. I'm going to say tab. Now, again, I don't need all the detail. I'm just going to hit the vendor. Now, also note that Amazon is one of those places that you might buy a whole bunch of different things. So you could be more specific. You could try to say, you know, this is Amazon for a specific thing, furniture and fixture, or put some other note in it to try to uh, tie out the different kinds of things that you may purchase in Amazon. Why would that be important? Because if you could somehow differentiate the types of things, then it'll save the transaction to a particular vendor and it'll save the proper account type. And if you if you can't do that, if everything's from Amazon and you buy like half of your expenses from Amazon, then every time you, you buy something different from Amazon, you're going to have to change the expense. It won't be able to memorize the transaction because you're using the same vendor for a whole bunch of different things. So anytime you can actually make the expense a little bit more defined, in some way uh, the name more defined then you can tie that out to a, an expense item specifically more specifically and in the following months it'll memorize what that expense item will be a little bit more easily therefore the data input in the following month would be easier as long as you can get that that user name to be somewhat distinct in some way and tie out to a distinct expense account so in any case and also no i'm not going to put any more detail on this just just amazon i just need to pay them that's it I'm going to say, okay, and this is going to be, we could put a memo for purchase of furniture, which probably would be good. I'm not going to do that here though. 
7,000 and we're going to put that right into the same furniture and fixture account that we just set up. We can find it now by simply typing in. If I start to type in furniture and fixture, it will start to populate what we need. So notice it's getting a little bit easier and easier as we already have the accounts set up to just start entering the data into the system. So we're going to be picking up that furniture and fixture. That's the one we want. I'm going to go ahead and save that. What's this going to do to the financial statements? It's going to increase the furniture and fixture, the asset account, the other side, the checking account goes down. So let's take a look at it. Let's go to the trial balance. Let's refresh the screen for the trial balance and see if that is indeed the case. So I'm going to close the hamburger on the trustee trial balance. I'm going to scroll back up to the 125. Let's take a look at our checking account, which is currently at the 117,000. Going into the checking account at the 117,000, we see Amazon and our last transaction there. Let's open that up. Let's see the type of form that's going to be used. It's not going to take us back to the register here. It's going to take us to that expense form, which it generated. The checking account is going down. The other side going to the furniture and fixture. Closing that back out and scrolling back up top and to the right. Let's go back to the report. The other side going into furniture and fixture. That 23000 in furniture and fixture now. Selecting that, we see there's our transaction. There's the other side. Scrolling back up, back to our report. Let's take a look at how it's formatted on the balance sheet. Scrolling up to the balance sheet, obviously, the, well, let's refresh the screen on the balance sheet. Refresh. Now we see that the checking account's at the 117. That looks correct. And then we're going to be scrolling down and noting that the furniture and fixtures in that subcategory. Now, notice the way we did the subcategorization is a, is a, a little bit different. We have it in the, in, all in fixed assets. And then we have the subcategory of furniture and fixture and then the machinery and equipment we set up as having another basically subcategory for uh, the original cost and the depreciation. Now there's a couple different ways you can you could set you know the, the furniture and fixture up. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we go into the formatting options. But let's just take a look at it quickly here. If I go back to the to the first screen, the register, and I select the um, the hamburger and I scroll back down and we open up the uh, accounting we take a look at the chart of accounts and then I close up the hamburger and scroll down to the furniture and fixture we set this up as one account here and then down here the machinery and equipment is set up as machinery and equipment and then sub accounts original cost and depreciation so we could do that with every major category if we want to track the accumulated depreciation separately, or we could we can just have one category for each of them, and we may want to record the total depreciation expense uh, in total for all uh, depreciable assets. So again, we'll we'll may do some more reformatting of this when we get to the adjusting entry process. Just note the format of these two; these are our first kind of subcategories, and if you look at those and edit them. Uh, what's happening is there's a subcategory check and then they put it underneath machinery and equipment. So again, we could do a similar thing for furniture and fixture. If I close this back out, we could make two other accounts called original cost and depreciation and make them the sub accounts of furniture and fixture. And then, and then put the, the amount that we recorded as the purchase under the original cost. So we'll format that. We'll think more about that when we get to the adjusting entries because these get more complex when you think about the accumulated depreciation that will be recorded with them.